Welcome to Nice and Blunt. I'm Adam Riancho, and it's Thursday, week 10. We have a game tonight between the Bengals and the Ravens. Who are you going to start and who are you going to sit? Sadly, we have some key injuries for this matchup. T. Higgins is doubtful, going to miss his third straight game with a quad injury, and Charlie Jones is doubtful as well. More of a punt and kick returner though not too relevant eric all the rookie tight end is on ir he tore his acl last week so out for the season and zach moss has a neck injury he's on ir potentially for the season as well bj hill defensive tackle and orlando brown offensive tackle both questionable the Bengals are a bit banged up the ravens also dealing with injuries cornerback tj tampa is on ir but Jalen Armour Davis is doubtful as well. So they did just trade for Tredavious White from the Rams, and maybe that'll help, but their secondary has been terrible this season. Defensive tackle Michael Pierce was placed on injured reserve. Brenton Urban, defensive end, is out with a concussion. And Rasheen Ali, backup running back, is questionable, was pretty irrelevant, but they are expecting Keaton Mitchell to play tonight. He should be activated for this game, making his season debut off of IR. He was full in practice this week and also last week. So they've been saving him. Good spot for him. I do think Keaton has some upside tonight. But most importantly, Isaiah Likely, backup tight end, is out. And that does open up a few more targets for Mark Andrews. Andrews is a safer bet to find the end zone. But the critical injuries are really Isaiah Likely and T. Higgins. Both players scored two touchdowns in week five in the first matchup between these two teams. Likely barely did much in terms of yardage, but two touchdowns is very important. That could impact Lamar Jackson's upside, but I'm not too worried about it in general. And then T. Higgins does limit Joe Burrow's upside being out. That is important. He had two touchdowns, not just last time in week five, but also last year when he played against Baltimore. And also in 2022, his last game there, he had 194 yards and two touchdowns. He has six touchdowns in the last four games against the Ravens. So T Higgins normally plays very well. They will miss him tonight, but let's get to it. Let's start with the players who are on the Ravens. Who are you starting and who are you sitting? I think obviously Lamar Jackson is in your lineup. He's my quarterback number one this week. He's the quarterback number one on the season. And this matchup does rank top four. They give up the most rushing yards per game to quarterbacks overall this year, about 39 per game the last five weeks. So definitely Lamar will go off in the run game. I definitely trust him a lot. He had over 50 in week five in this first matchup of the season, but they do give up 22 points per game in general. Lamar is going to be elite. No one's benching him. He is fantastic. A must start every week. I'm also starting Derrick Henry, no matter what, he's a guaranteed plug into your lineup, but I do expect a slightly lower ceiling for him in this matchup. The Bengals are a tough spot. They do rank bottom five against running backs, only giving up 16 points per game on 77 rushing yards per game. That's only 3.6 yards per carry. We know Derrick Henry does very little in the passing game, but four rushing touchdowns is where I'm not worried about it. I think Henry will score a touchdown no matter what. He has 13 touchdowns in nine games this year. So don't worry, but I do downgrade him a little bit. It's a Thursday night game. He's 30 years old. I could see him come off the field a little bit more for some added rest. Why not get Keaton Mitchell involved a little bit alongside Justice Hill? So with no pass catching um, prowess for Henry, I don't think he goes over 100 yards from scrimmage. And I do think he's limited from an efficiency standpoint. He'll need one big play to really pop off. That's what he needed in week five. He had a 51 yard run in overtime, but still only had 96 total yards on the game from scrimmage. So the touchdown was very important. Without it, he would not have gone over 10 points. And this is not the easiest spot for Henry. So that's why I only rank him at RB8, probably my lowest ranking on him all season long, but I do think he's a slight downgrade. There's a loaded position this week at running back. Everyone ranked above him is a true stud as well. So he's still in the elite tier. I still think 16, 20 points is probably guaranteed for him, but I do pump the brakes slightly. I do not think he goes over a hundred yards tonight. So that's why I downgrade Derrick Henry, but still inside the top 10, he's a must start 
every single week. Those backups, though, I do think could get some touches and do have some vulture potential. Keaton Mitchell is a house call waiting to happen. So even if he only gets like four or five touches, one of them could pop off for 12 fantasy points. It's always possible with him. He's one touch away. But Justice Hill is involved a lot more in the passing game. If they are trailing at all in this matchup, Hill could see another six targets. We've seen that happen multiple times for him this year. So I have them both back to back at 44 and 45 low end running back dart throws. You're probably keeping them on the bench, but I do see some upside potential for them tonight. Probably not enough to trust at receiver though. Zay flowers has definitely earned must start status. He has a hundred plus yards in four of his last six games. However, in the other two, he has less than 15 and he's a big boom bust option. But most of the time he does go over a hundred yards. That's what he did in week five against the Bengals. He had 120 total yards on about 13 opportunities, 12 targets, one rush attempt, seven catches, no touchdown. He has not scored that much this year, but still 15 plus fantasy points was amazing. I'm not worried about flowers at all tonight. So maybe he has a bad game, but you're kind of just going to take that with the upside. He's too good to bench when he goes off. It's elite. When he plays badly, it is pretty brutal. So good luck. I hope it doesn't happen, but I wouldn't bet on it. I would expect flowers to keep it rolling. I would not take a shot on those backup receivers in Baltimore, though, even though Isaiah likely is out, you're just chasing touchdowns and a pretty unpredictable target share for the most part. I do think Bateman is the safer guy to do it with, but at wide receiver 48, I don't think he's a worthwhile plug in. You're just hoping for a deep touchdown and it is possible he could score from 50 plus yards out, but without it, you will get burned. And he only had four targets last week with Deontay Johnson added to the mix. I do worry about his volume uh, from a week to week basis. Last week, Deontay Johnson had a bagel, not a single target, but that probably does change soon. He does have experience in division. He used to play for the Steelers. He's faced off against Cincinnati quite a lot, but I looked into his stats. Nothing was like super impressive. It's a completely new situation and he didn't get a target last week at all. So I have no idea what to expect. I did rank him at number 60, but I'd rather go Bateman. I do think Bateman at 48 is a bit more interesting and valuable. So no thank you with either of them, just chasing touchdowns and no chance at all would I consider Nelson Aguilar. You can keep him on the waiver wire. Mark Andrews, though, is a absolute must start tonight with no Isaiah likely. The touchdown is probably guaranteed, and he does have four touchdowns in his last four games. He did not find the end zone last week, but it probably comes back to him more likely than not. So I would trust him while he doesn't have more than five targets in a single game this season. This is the spot where it could happen with no likely. I think he'll be fine and he should find pay dirt. I do trust Andrews who is averaging 12 points per game the last four, but it is dependent on touchdowns four in that span. The volume is still pretty low, about four targets per game on average, nothing special. Andrews could be more involved, that's for sure. But as long as he finds the end zone, you probably won't care. I would still start him at tight end six. I think he's a guaranteed start this week for you. But for the Bengals, I think Joe Burrow is a guaranteed start tonight. My quarterback number four in week 10. He doesn't have much rushing upside, but I think he's just as valuable as Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and maybe even Lamar in the same game, because in week five against Baltimore, he put up 33.7 points. He was fantastic. 392 yards, five touchdowns, only one interception. That could easily happen again tonight. With no T Higgins, it's probably only like three, maybe four touchdowns max, but still, I think he goes over a 300 yards, I think he will be balling out tonight because the Ravens cannot stop quarterbacks. Over the last five games, they are the number three matchup, giving up 24 points per game, 318 passing yards per game. That's only second to Tampa, who can't stop anyone. So love Joe Burrow tonight, definitely going off. They've also given up 14 passing touchdowns the last five games. He will throw for three no matter what. I think Burrow will be the engine and heartbeat of this offense tonight. So definitely starting him at quarterback four, you cannot bench him unless you had him uh, behind Lamar Jackson. I'm also starting Chase Brown no matter what tonight. Last week, he had 32 touches in this offense. With no Zach Moss, he is clearly the workhorse. So that'll probably repeat, although it's Thursday night, he's only 24 years old and I wouldn't worry about it. He will get 
a shit ton of volume tonight. I also think he can exploit the Ravens in the passing game. The Ravens allow the most receiving yards per game to opposing receivers. League average is about 30 yards per game. And for them, it's 54 on average. So love this spot for Chase Brown. He will get a lot of targets, a lot of catches. And I really don't care about the lack of efficiency on the ground. They do give up three receiving touchdowns as well. So Chase Brown will score a touchdown in the passing game, most likely. And that's what he did week five, even when Zach Moss was on the field. He had 12.9 points per, in that game, 15 touches, three catches, 54 total yards, and a receiving touchdown. I could see this volume double tonight. So I have him at number 12. I think I could be way too low, honestly, but I have Derrick Henry at number eight, and running back is just loaded. This week, you can't really go wrong with most options. They all have 20-point upside tonight. So definitely starting Chase Brown at running back 12, I think he is a must start this week. But given it's Thursday and they did just trade for, for Khalil Herbert, there is a slight chance that he does get vultured. I wouldn't be completely shocked if it happened, given it is Thursday and Herbert has very fresh legs. He's barely seen any touches this season and he is talented. I do think Herbert is better than he got credit for in Chicago. So there's a slight chance. I do rank him behind Keaton Mitchell at 46, but you're just praying for a touchdown. I would pass most likely, I think he's worth benching. We need to see it. You really have no idea what to expect from Khalil Herbert. So no thank you with him, but 100% guarantee Jamar Chase needs to be started tonight. He's my wide receiver one this week, and he was exactly that. In week five, he had 36 fantasy points, 10 catches, 193 yards on 12 targets with two touchdowns against Baltimore in week five. So he will go off once again. I could see 200 plus yards Honestly, tonight, I think he will dominate the Bengals. The Ravens are really bad against the wide receiver position. They are the number one matchup, giving up 42 plus points per game, 218 yards per game, and 10 touchdowns the last five weeks. Jamar should score at least one touchdown, if not two, tonight. So definitely start him. He's the number one receiver this season, and this matchup in week five was a big reason for that. He will go off once again. Behind him without T. Higgins, though, it is a big gamble. I do not feel confident in starting one of the backup receivers. If I would, it would be Andre Yoshivas, but you're really just praying for that touchdown. It usually hits, though, without T. Higgins. He does have three touchdowns in four games this season. The first two games of the year and the last two games, T. Higgins has not played. And Yoshi has stepped up in the red zone, but otherwise done nothing. An average of three and a half targets, one and a half catch per game for 11 yards and three touchdowns. That's the only reason he's averaging 6.4 points per game. So even if you do get a touchdown, you're not going over 10 points. I will pass on Yoshi tonight. You need two touchdowns for it to hit. So no, thank you. I will ignore him. And I'm definitely ignoring Trenton Irwin and Jermaine Burton. Neither player has more than like one catch in any game this year. Jermaine Burton, if he does catch it, it will be a deep shot, go for over 40 yards, but he only has two catches in eight games this season. And Trenton Irwin has no more than six yards in any game this year. No, thank you. I'm definitely not starting either of them. Keep them on the waiver wire. Mike Gesicki, though, is the player that steps up without T. Higgins. He's been phenomenal in four games this season without T. Higgins. He is averaging 12.8 points per game with two touchdowns that all came last week. So the yardage is what I care about. 6.8 6 targets per game, 5.5 catches per game, 71 yards per game. Joe Burrow trusts Gesicki as that number two option behind Jamar Chase. So last week he had two touchdowns, 100 yards. It could happen again. This matchup is not bad. The Ravens do give up 56 yards per game to the position on average. So I love Gesicki tonight. He is my tight end five. I think he'll be better than Andrews from a yardage standpoint. I think both of them could find the end zone with high likelihood. So love Gesicki this week. I think he's a must start at tight end number five. I could consider a double tight end lineup with Andrews and Gesicki, one of them in the flex, the other at tight end. Tonight, I would consider it if I had it. So um, that's interesting. Gasicki going to play very good tonight, but the backup tight end Drew Sample, you can forget about him. Although Eric All was getting involved, not enough to really contribute. And although Sample does have some potential, I would not start him. I don't expect more than three targets for him tonight. So definitely keep him on the waiver wire. And I would also keep the Ravens and Bengals defenses 
on the waiver wire this week as well. I do not trust them at all. This first matchup was a massive shootout. It went into overtime. The Ravens won 41 to 38 in week five. So I could see that happening again. I see another shootout tonight. Both teams go over 30 in my opinion. So I'm going to bench both of them. I think the Ravens win. So I do rank them higher. I have the Ravens at 21, the Bengals at 25, but with four teams on by, that is not impressive. They're basically bottom of the barrel. In my opinion this week, definitely must benches at defense. So those are my start sit decisions. I feel extremely confident with Lamar Jackson in my lineup tonight, my quarterback number one. Same with Joe Burrow. He's my number four guy this week. And I'm all obviously starting Derrick Henry, Chase Brown, Zay Flowers, Jamar Chase, Mark Andrews, and Mike Gesicki. All of those players are starts for me tonight. I have them ranked inside the top 12 at worst. Chase Brown is the lowest ranked player for me, respectively, at his position. All of them should be good tonight. So definitely starting them. And given the shootout potential for this game, I do think there are five candidates to have a big blow up game they are the dart throws tonight but i think odds are you're benching all of them i don't think you're desperate enough to start them only in dfs would i take a gamble on rashad bateman hoping for that 50 yard touchdown to hit yoshivas you probably need two touchdowns so i rank him right behind bateman i think i'd pass but he probably finds the end zone deontay johnson did nothing last week but he could have a breakout game tonight it is possible that zay flowers does take a back seat but Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell, I do think will contribute. I think one of them could have a big game with Justice. Maybe he catches like six targets and goes over like 70 yards from scrimmage with Keaton Mitchell. Maybe he pops off a 50 yard rushing touchdown just on one play. He could give you 10 plus points. So they're all interesting, but I think you're benching all five of these guys. One of them will go off, but I don't feel confident to know exactly who it will be. So only bet on them in daily fantasy tonight in your season long lineup. No thank you with these players. I'm definitely benching these other players no matter what. I think Khalil Herbert needs to stay on the bench. Same with Drew Sample, Trenton Irwin, Jermaine Burton, Nelson Aguilar, as well as Zach Moss, T. Higgins, and Isaiah Likely. They're all injured tonight. And both defenses, I think, will be very lackluster. Definitely give up a ton of yards and points. Bench the Bengals and Ravens defenses tonight. So those are my start sit decisions. And here is my final score prediction. I do see a shootout. As mentioned, I think the Ravens are going to win. Final score 33 to 30. I think both teams score at least three touchdowns, if not four, and they will surpass 30 points. If it goes into overtime again, I wouldn't be shocked. But without T Higgins, I just don't think the Bengals have enough firepower overall. They will Keep it close. I think it will come down to less than a touchdown, but I do think the Ravens win and keep rolling. This loss could keep the Bengals out of the playoffs at the end of the year. It's a very important game, but I just don't think they get it. So I think the Bengals probably missed the playoffs this season. They performed too poorly in the early part of the year. Their defense is not good enough and there's not enough weapons other than Jamar Chase on this offense. So uh, if T Higgins was healthy, maybe I'd pick him, but not tonight. I do think the Ravens win 33 to 30, which means I am taking the Bengals to cover the spread. Ravens are favored by six and a half. I do not think they win by more than a touchdown, but I think you should smash the over tonight. I think the 52 and a half point line is way too low. I see well over 60 points on the scoreboard this evening. So give me the over, give me the Bengals to cover, but the Ravens to win 33 to 30. The weather is perfect tonight. No concerns. It should be a shootout on offense. Lastly, I give you a over under bet on underdog and tonight's five pick entry is only worth $3 down, but will return 215. If correct, if you want to join me, use code nice and blunt on sign up on underdog.com. The link is in the, in the description and with code nice and blunt, you will get your first deposit matched by 50%. So help your boy out. If you do want to join me on underdog, use code nice and blunt. Here is the pick. Those five picks I mentioned are Derrick Henry under hundred total yards. I mentioned it's a tough matchup. He didn't do that in week five. I don't think he does it again. He would need overtime to do that. So I don't think he plays his best all year on Thursday. I think he goes under a hundred yards in a tough matchup. Joe Burrow though, I think will throw at least three touchdowns, if not more 
all of the production in the red zone goes through Burrow. They do not punch it in on the ground almost ever. So Chase Brown probably scores, but it will be a catch. I think that is one. Jamar Chase is a guaranteed touchdown, maybe even two for him. And Andre Yoshivas or Gesicki will score that last one. So definitely hit the over on Joe Burrow, two and a half passing touchdowns. Love that scorcher pick. That one I think is guaranteed. And I also think Chase Brown will dominate in the passing game tonight. The Ravens give up the most receiving yards to running backs overall the last five games, an average of 54 yards to the position. So I hit the over on 40 receiving yards for Chase Brown. I think he will be dominant in the check down department. I see a lot of yards for him. So love that line on Chase Brown. It was originally like 24. I actually increased it to bump up the payout structure of this bet. So if you want to keep it as it was, the line is originally like 23. I think it should be over 40 tonight. I also think Mike Gesicki is a lock to go over 60 receiving yards with no T Higgins. He is averaging over 70 in those four games and the Ravens give up at least 56 on average to opposing tight ends. So Gesicki should surpass that. I think 60 yards is a very good bet on Gesicki. Touchdown, not guaranteed, but the yardage should be there. Burrow will get him the ball a lot. So love that line on Gesicki. I think he's a smash pick tonight. And then this one is the most guaranteed of them all. Jamar Chase almost put up 200 yards in week five against Baltimore. They are a leaky secondary and he will go over 100 guaranteed tonight. I think he probably goes over 150 to be honest with you. So this one could be much higher, honestly, but I want to keep it a little bit safe. I hit the over on 100 receiving yards just to prevent this from crumbling the entire bet. If one of these is wrong, I will not get anything. So I'm not going to go overboard, but I do want to increase my payout. That's why most of these are scorchers, higher estimates than the website would originally recommend. So five picks for $215, $3 down. I think it's worth it. I think there's a high chance it hits tonight. So again, if you want to join me, use code nice and blunt and on sign up, get 50% of your deposit matched with code nice and blunt. But that's it for this video. My name is Adam Riancho, and if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Nice and blunt.